so what are the challenges that these young people face? Well, I think I started to name some of them. Um, I'm thinking right now, though, about a project that I am just writing up articles from um, some work that I did, a participatory youth research project in Montreal with young people at Don Laddie and a doctoral student there of mine named Jane Malenfant. She's almost done. She's almost a doctor. Um, and we were looking at the working with young people to examine the public sector institutions um, that could be better utilized to prevent youth from becoming homeless. And what was pretty shocking was just how many of them not only were not preventing young people from becoming homeless, but were actively contributing to young people's housing instability and institutions that you wouldn't think about. The article I'm writing right now is about young people's efforts to seek access to, to healthcare um, and the relentless <laughs> unremitting work that young people do, especially to seek access to um, mental health care and or addictions treatment that is unsuccessful often for years. <laughs> so they talk about years trying to get an, uh, an appropriate diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And then once they are diagnosed, actually seek to secure access to evidence-based treatment um, ends up causing homelessness because their lives get so disorganized, they become so destabilized that they lose their housing. So we've often talked about um, homelessness causing poor health outcomes, but I actually think it's much more complex than that and that a lack of access to timely and sufficient health care can be a driver of homelessness mm -hmm. as well for young people, especially mm -hmm. if they don't have advocates, parents to, you know, bang on the door of our healthcare institutions, but also to pick up the pieces for them. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have mental health services that are publicly funded and sufficient for the number of mental health issues or the amount of suffering that we're seeing right now in almost any of our provinces. But in Quebec, where this research is taking place, where young people are relying mostly on emergency rooms, there is a fundamental lack of capacity to address anything but keeping a young person alive. So a young person may show up at an emergency room um, six or seven times a month <laughs> and be uh -huh. given something that prevents them from dying because they've overdosed or they've tried to kill themselves. Um, but the there's no coordination of care. There's no communication across the different emergency rooms that a young person may be seeking supports. Uh -huh. And that actually the intersect interaction between the different interventions can cause mental health problems when they're get, getting pumped full of all kinds of different sorts of drugs, mm -hmm. for example, and there's no communication or follow-up, um, we are actually creating conditions where our healthcare interventions undermine young people's health and their housing. 